I'm Eric Novak, and coming up on this next review, I'm going to take a look at the 2017 Volkswagen Golf. But hang on, this one, it's all electric. Let's be honest, any news you may have heard recently about Volkswagen as it pertains to the environment or fuel economy has been negative and it's been tied to Dieselgate. That unfortunate situation is something that this company has to deal with, but from the, the, uh, the wreckage of failure, you often know that there are the seeds of future success. A lot of people don't know that Volkswagen, while being uh, embroiled in the Dieselgate scandal, has also had a pretty significant electrification program in development. For 2015, Volkswagen actually launched the e-Golf. It is their first electrified vehicle in their lineup, full electrified, I should say, and it's basically a Volkswagen Golf with an electric powertrain. Now, from 2015 until now, it's been largely available in Europe and in the U.S. as a compliance vehicle for the most part in California. But for 2017, the Volkswagen e-Golf has received some upgrades, most notably a larger motor and a larger battery for extended range. There's been some new design features, and more importantly for me, it's now available for the first time here in Canada. And it's for that reason why I have the Volkswagen e-Golf as part of my latest EnviroDad test drive review. In terms of looking at the exterior design of the 2017 e-Golf, uh, there really is uh, very little to distinguish it from the regular uh, mainline Golf products, and that's to the point. I mean, uh, the design team wants to have more subtlety in this e-Golf than something that's outlandish or way out there. Um, but that being said, there are some things that's interesting. The, uh, the features you see on the exterior of the e-Golf give us the first look at the uh, design changes to the mid-model refresh of the 2018 Golf. Some of those features include, uh, there's a new sort of C-shaped uh, LED daytime running light, new available uh, LED headlights, as well as um, LED taillights, which is something that makes sense here with the e-Golf because as we know, um, LEDs offer greater illumination, but they use less energy. Um, additionally, with the e-Golf, you will see some uh, small badging that notes the e-Golf. Uh, there's a 16 inch low rolling resistance tire. It's also tucked in a little bit tighter into the wheel well, so you'll get a, a greater, uh, less wind resistance, a greater coefficient of drag. But perhaps one of the most interesting things about the exterior uh, on the e-Golf is that there's as many as 40 exterior colors to choose from. There's nine standard colors. Uh, this peacock green, which I gotta admit, it's not my favorite green ever, is one of the nine standard colors, but there's actually an additional 31 other customizable and a wide color palette range uh, available to you. There's, there's one of those that's an onyx white that has a small surcharge. The remainder of them, there's about 30 colors, will, will cost you about three grand extra to put on top. Uh, but hey, if you're into expression of personality and you wanna find a, a lime green or a purple or something like that, it's all available. In fact, what's interesting is um, only uh, the e-Golf and the Golf R will be uh, Volkswagen Golfs that have this 40 color palette available to you but otherwise it's pretty much a standard looking Volkswagen Golf which isn't necessarily a bad thing with this new electrified powertrain charging up the 2017 e-golf is pretty simple the uh, charge port is located in the rear where uh, the uh, gasoline uh, intake usually is uh, there is level 3 uh, charging capabilities it's standard for vehicles sold in Canada it's an available upgrade in the US. As you can see, the charge, the level three charge port is here. Uh, another improvement for the 2017 version is that it now has a 7.2 kilowatt 
charger, which gives you faster charging times. Using a 240 charge unit, you'll get uh, overnight charging in about six hours to full. Uh, using a level three, you'll get it to about 80% from empty in about 45 minutes to an hour or so. So it's really pretty simple charging up better than gas, the 2017 e-Golf. So the interior of the 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf will offer all golf drivers a bit of a look as to what the uh, 2018 Golf will uh, resemble, but it also has some unique elements that are exclusive to the e-Golf as well. Uh, one of the things that uh, is noticeable with this, and it will carry over to the 2018, is uh, the uh, the new center screen. It's a it's a it's a 9.2 inch. Uh, screen and it's really been an improvement from uh, previous Volkswagen uh, units in the middle. It's large and the resolution is is very clear and crisp. But it also has a new feature uh, that they're adding and it's uh, it's called gesture control. So uh, rather than having to be precise with touches, uh, for example, if, if you just get within proximity, uh, the uh, the gesturing will indicate to pop up. Uh, certain icons um, and it's helpful for uh, things such as your GPS but when you get into uh, for example uh, when you're driving along you're looking for say uh, stations or songs on your uh, your mobile your uh, your device your uh, iPod or your phone uh, you can actually skim through just by sort of swiping through uh, I'm doing it here with the stations it's actually just by gesture control it's changing the stations and that's uh, something it's more convenient you don't have to be exactly on the money and and I do like that feature as well um, on the uh, the navigation control if you we get to it here another thing that helps especially with an electric vehicle is uh, you have something known as a, a 360 range um, so if if I want to find out, based upon the amount of uh, charge I still have left, right now I'm looking at basically approximately the uh, range that I could go to, you know, in a direct non-stop manner, assuming there's uh, no changes in my overall range. But there we are. It gives me an exact look at, okay, if I'm where I am right now, I could get to, you know, around Lake Ontario to Hamilton or to almost Belleville in the case where where I'm situated right now, just east of Toronto. Uh, so that's a very helpful uh, thing as well. Um, overall, there's uh, a lot of usability here. The steering controls are fine. Um, information is visible. There's a, an LED readout in the center stack. My driver console as well. It gives me information on range and battery charges. There's plenty of information overall. Uh, so uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way the design and layout is with the 2017 e-Golf. <music> Driving the 2017 e-Golf, or any EV for that matter, provides a relatively normal experience but with some notable differences. The updated e-Golf is powered by a high voltage 35.8 kilowatt hour battery which is an improvement over the 2015 version. This is possible thanks to new cell technology, improved materials with greater energy density and better utilization of cell volume. Power output from the 100 kilowatt motor is equivalent to 134 horsepower and 214 pound-feet of torque. Its North American published range is just over 200 kilometers or 125 miles. However, during my week I was consistently achieving a range of about one-third higher. I was admittedly driving in ideal conditions for EVs, which is in the mid to high 20s Celsius or high 70s in Fahrenheit, but it goes to show that true range can vary upon a variety of factors, something that holds true with regular gas engines as well. With no transmission shifting gears, the ride is smoother than a regular car and quieter overall as well. Bottom line is that the e-Golf still offers plenty of driving pleasure, but with no tailpipe emissions to go along with it. There's a lot to like about this 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf. The improvement of the battery to a new 35.8 kilowatt hour battery with the extended range that it offers and the power with the new enhanced motor as well makes this something that was once a compliance car into something that I feel is mainstream and viable for the vast majority of people who would consider a vehicle of this type. Um, there's a lot of great technology inside. It's a comfortable ride. The torque that you'll see in a, in a battery like this makes it fun to drive as well. And it's also priced right. I think that we're getting into this next generation of electric vehicles. You're seeing, at least 
least here in Canada with the incentives, you'll definitely be able to buy something uh, under uh, under $30,000, well under 30 in Ontario with the, the up to $14,000 uh, rebate. Uh, and even in the US with the available tax credits, you're getting a vehicle that uh, is in line with more and more vehicles of this type. Overall, I think a lot of the aversions about driving an electric vehicle are, are disappearing. More of the excuses that you used to hear are falling by the wayside when you get into uh, viable, affordable, and fun vehicles like this new Volkswagen e-Golf. I really think this has the potential to be a hit. I think the only thing hindering it right now is availability, and we need to see more of these vehicles on the dealership lots in Canada and across North America, because if so, I think sales will certainly see a spike. I enjoyed my time with this car, and I hope you enjoyed this review. But until next time, for EnviroDad.com, I'm Eric Novak. Thanks for watching. There's plenty of ways for you to keep connected with me, so check out some of my social media links, suggested videos, and you know I'd really love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel.